Hi guys, um, we're not gonna start for another two minutes, um, but we're trying to get all our technology up and running. If you guys saw me trying to figure this out on Friday, you'll know that technology is not my strong suit. So um, we're gonna have a guest on tonight and I'll introduce her in a minute, but I'm just waiting. Um, I'm just waiting for her to get on. Okay, and I'm gonna invite her in. Let's see if this actually works. I'm inviting her in and let's see. Helen should be joining us now. Let's see. Okay. Let's, uh, I see Helen. Oh my God. So she, now I see you. Hi. <laughs> it's amazing. We still have a minute before we're going to start. Um, but if you're um, hanging out, then I would say hang out for a little bit because we're going to learn some really, really good techniques um, for grounding people. So we're going to wait because it's, it's not nine o'clock yet. Um, can you believe we actually both got on Helen? It's like I'm a sure. small miracle in our time, <laughs> it right? It truly is. Like it's a lie like, from New York. It's a lie from New York. <laughs> totally, exactly. I feel like we're going to, the irony is we do not live that far apart. And for us, it would have been so much easier just like to hobble over to the other person's house, but that's not happening. Not so um, yeah, if you're joining us, we'll be starting in about a minute. Um, we're talking about flattening the emotional curve. And so um, we're just going to wait for more people to get online. Um, the irony of all of this is that when I tried to do this on Facebook, I found out you can't have a guest with you on Facebook, but I found that out live. So that was pretty rare. <laughs> okay. Well, it is nine o'clock and I like to start punctually. So, um, I'm really excited. This is the second or the third of our series, the third of our series on flattening the emotional curve. Um, this has been a really, really trying time for a lot of us. It's been a complicated weekend. Um, I was out outside in the sun as much as I could walking around the block with my husband, um, watching different small groups, sort of really, really like ones and twos, just walking up the block and keeping distance from each other. And it made me feel really good to know that people were taking this super seriously. Um, and hopefully if we all hang out there, we'll like manage this, make this go, but this will work. We'll, we'll, we'll manage to flatten the real curve. Um, but tonight we're talking about flattening the emotional curve because I know many of you must be feeling like everybody in my family, which is that for a minute or two, we're like, hi, and it's going to be better and everything's going to work great. And then things go low and everybody's like super depressed. And, and I know that I'm having trouble sleeping and st stopping my heart racing. And so I thought a perfect guest to bring on <laughs> would, would be Helen. Helen Leff is um, a social worker. She's on the staff at Mays Women's Health. Um, everybody, but everybody loves Helen. Like Helen is just a sweetheart. Um, as a matter of fact, I laugh when people call up and they make an, want to make an appointment for me. I think the front desk says, no, go with Helen. She's, <laughs> She's very loving and warm. You'll see in a minute. Um, Helen is a social worker who for many, many years worked with families of special needs kids. Um, we were really blessed when she came to work for us two years ago, um, and now she's a sex therapist with Mays Women's Health. Um, but she, you know, a lot of the therapists on our staff uh, sort of pick um, kinds of therapy and the way of doing therapy, which speaks specifically to them. And Helen really latched onto something, um, the somatic therapy. We all took a course in it, and Helen was like, I really love this. And, um, and, and Helen, explain, can you explain to people what somatic therapy is sure. and why you like it? Absolutely. So I'm on, you hear me, this is working. Yes. Okay, you might want to angle it down a little. Yeah, exactly. Cause just, okay. That's fine. You're fine. You're good. Like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so somatic work is a lot of different things, but basically it's, it's a trauma modality. And basically it works on how we hold stress in different parts of our body. And it works on felt sense, like really tapping into how you're feeling, like what's really happening inside your body. And it's a very gentle therapy, which is why I think I gravitate toward it. And um, what I can emphasize about it is its emphasis actually is on slow is fast. And as you know, I'm pretty on the slow side. So this really speaks to me and works for me. And, um, and one of the things that I think is always interesting about somatic therapy is that um, we often think that if we talk in therapy and we talk in therapy, that it will calm us down and it will flip, slow down our anxiety. But somatic therapy almost flips it on its head. It says if you can if you can make your body not feel anxious, your brain will stop feeling anxious. And you know, Helen and I are like on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> Helen is very slow and calm, and I am 
that. So, um, <laughs> so it's really good for each other, but especially in these trying times, Helen is like the guru on this. So, so Helen, maybe start talk, walking us through some exercises. Yeah. So I actually practice this. I'm not going to lie. So um, I have a bit of a spiel here. What I want to do is I want to give everybody four easy tools that they can use with their bodies. There's one prop that we need, but other than that, this is all just you. And I'm hoping it'll be really helpful in terms of flattening the emotional curve. Um, so to start with, what happens when the emotional curve is up there is that we kind of perceive danger. And there's a part of our brain called the amygdala that then when there's a perceived threat, Basically, that amygdala goes a little wacko and starts flashing and letting us know, danger, danger. And unfortunately, like, it's fortunate in one way because it alerts us, but what's unfortunate is that it kind of gets our whole nervous system out of whack. And our nervous system gets what's called dysregulated. And in order to stay calm, we need to work on regulating that nervous system. So I have a few exercises that I want to share that hopefully can help you calm your nervous system down. Thank you. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first one, which is so simple and just we don't think about it as an exercise, but I'm going to give you actually three grounding exercises. So the first grounding exercise is literally planting your feet on the ground. I'm doing and, it as we speak. Yeah, okay. and just really feeling the ground kind of coming up and holding your feet. Like you feel really rooted and literally grounded. And as much as I love Carol King, this is not the time for I feel the mer the earth move under my feet. This is the time to really feel the ground being firm underneath you. And just planting your feet on the ground should help you kind of feel that bottom down sort of sensation of calming down. Do you just rest your feet on the ground or do you actually sort of push them into the ground? So for right now, whatever feels right to you, if you wanna put some pressure down and just actually feel it, if you wanna be barefoot and like literally feel um, the ground, and this is probably a great exercise to do outside and just literally feel the ground under your feet. And you know that saying how like, don't answer a question if you're standing on one foot, which is metaphoric. Unless you're some kind of yoga marvel, it's probably not a good idea because when you're on one foot, you're pretty precarious and unbalanced. And when you have two feet firmly planted on the ground, you really do feel more balanced and more in your body. Are you sensing that? Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm super short. So I, um, as we all know, so, um, you know, and I need to pull forward a little bit to get my feet on the ground. And often my feet are not sturdy, but there's something very, if I know that I'm actually, the truth is I close my eyes and just sort of feel the earth, you know, feel the ground. It is very sort of steadying. There's something very steady about it. It sounds so silly, but it is, it's very steady. Fantastic. That's exactly what it's supposed to be doing for you. So kind of a riff on that is sitting in a chair. And you know that saying, like, I feel like the chair was pulled out from under me. That's actually like what happens when you feel unsupported and when you feel like you're free falling, so to speak. Or maybe why we're even told, like when we're getting bad news to sit down because you need to have something to hold you. That's how I look at it. So this exercise of also planting your feet on the floor, sitting in the chair, and actually really feeling your back touching the chair, the chair supporting your bottom and your upper thighs, like really looking at the chair is like a holding place that offers you like, oops, sorry, that offers you containment and is like a container enveloping you. Because I think what happens once again, when that amygdala is flashing and when our nervous system is out of whack, we kind of feel like we don't have anything to sort of contain ourselves. We're just flooded, we're overwhelmed, we're 
all over the place. So really taking the time to feel that share support is helpful. And from my own experience at Maze, when women will come into the therapy room, I often see them kind of sitting at the very edge of the couch. So it's sort of like also that idea of like you're at the edge, you know, on edge, at the edge of the chair. So I know that maybe there's value for a therapist in talking about what does it mean to you to sit on the edge of the chair and does it happen to you often and is this feeling something you experience a lot. But what I actually do is I actually just ask the person to try like I invite them, I don't even ask them, I kind of invite them to find a position on the couch that feels comfortable. And I ask if they, you know, have found that position, and if they can feel the couch, you know, against their back, and if they can feel the support of the couch underneath them. Because in order to do any real work, you have to feel safe. And I find that that is a way to kind of start out with people feeling this sense of safety and containment and holding. So this is so, I want to tell you, this is so great. I, this actually is working better for me, works better for me than putting my feet on the ground. I think that this because I'm short. I can't both put my feet on the ground and sit solidly. In the chair, <laughs> but just actually sitting on the chair and like really, which is something I never take time to do. Like there's a back behind me. Like just take a, you know, 10 seconds, close your eyes and there's a back holding me. And there's a chair under, you know, under my legs and my butt, and that's holding and it's steady. And there is something very, very calming about like taking that, you know, whatever, 10, 20, 30 seconds to just experience that, right? Well, I'm glad to hear that. Absolutely. Um, it's, yeah, you want to feel good. You want to feel contained. And hey, if you have a chair that's an armchair, even better. So um, that's the second grounding exercise. So the feet being planted on the ground, sitting on a chair and feeling that holding feeling. And the third- you, By the way, Helen, do you recommend people hold it for like 10 seconds or 30 seconds or what do you say? Right, so basically as long as somebody needs. I really do feel that different people process things, you know, in their body differently. And I want someone to really just go inside themselves and not feel rushed, take whatever time is needed because to me, again, slow is safe. And how whenever you find that safety inside, that's okay. I'm just going to reiterate for the people who just joined us, um, we're doing some somatic, ex somatic therapy exercises, which are all about um, feeling the, if you can feel the anxiety in your body and calm that down, then that calms your brain down. Like it's almost the opposite of what you often think of traditional therapy where you're talking and then it calms you down. This is all about like seeing if you can ground your body, make your body calm, and then that sort of calms your emotions and your experience. So sorry I did that little interjection. I know you did two of your exercises. We can go on. <laughs> okay, great. So the third thing that happens is a very common response, I think, to anxiety is this sense of feeling your heart racing. And for a lot of people, that's actually scary because they worry, you know, I'm having a heart attack. Like people... When you are anxious, as we know, you're going to go lots of different places outside of like your social cognitive brain. You're just going to lose it, basically, because that's, you know, what happens to us. So it's really, really important to be able to regulate that. And like I was saying, we all have the ability to do this on our own and just from our own bodies. So one of the go-to exercises that I have, and if I didn't have to hold my phone with two hands, believe me, I'd be there right okay. now, <laughs> which is to place your right hand on your chest near your heart, like pledging allegiance. And what I tell people is to just, yeah, Go inside for a minute, have a soft gaze, close your eyes, whatever helps you, and just notice what's happening inside. Because generally what I do here is once your hand is there and you've just like kept it there for a few seconds, you generally will feel that your heart is slowing down, things are slowing down, and you're feeling more comfortable. Is that what you're sensing, Bacheva? Yeah, no, it definitely, it definitely slows it down. I actually, 
at one point when I had learned this exercise, they said you could do with two hands, right? Like two, and like I'm just getting up a little bit. Yeah. And so maybe that's typical me. I need more. <laughs> yes. There's but, actually, if you, you can do several things, you can put that other hand possibly on your shoulder if you can stretch. And that really gives you a sense of like hugging. You can put both hands on your shoulder, you know, one on the right, one on the left. And like really hug yourself. Hold yourself. Like, hold, hold yourself. yourself. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And there is something so physically visceral about this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because one of the things that's been so hard for me is I'm a hugger. And I see people, even if I see them on, you know, on Zoom, or I, I just, my instinct is to reach out and hold people. And I can't do that now. And um, this is, this is great. I mean, this is yeah. great. This is it's like self-containing. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. That's exactly what it is. And the beautiful thing is you could tell the person that you want to hug them, but they can do that for themselves. And that's, that's great. what's really wonderful about this. So, you know, I kind of feel like when I put my hand on my chest or heart, it's just kind of my way of telling myself, like, I got this. I got you. You know, I'm holding you. You're okay. So Absolutely. that's why I really like um, this exercise. Yeah. And this works a lot with your clients, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So again, just to review the three grounding exercises that we've done is planting your feet on the floor, feeling contained when you're sitting in a chair, like it's holding you. And when your heart is racing, keeping your hand just placed on your chest, like Pledge of Allegiance, and just slowing things down, because that's the point of this. So that's what we've done so far. The fourth thing that I wanted to share is a little bit different. It's actually a breathing exercise. And I know, Bacheva, we have talked about breathing. And I am no expert on breathing. Perhaps you'll bring someone who is an expert on breathing into it. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Okay. Okay. But the exercise that I have to share is that we generally don't think about our breathing, right? Like, thankfully, breathing is just the most natural process. Like, who really focuses on it? However, it is helpful to just focus on your breathing because breathing, too, can slow things down and calm our nervous system when it's dysregulated. So I know for some people, and that's fine, whatever works for you. I'm just giving suggestions. These work for some people, maybe not others, but... I know taking deep breaths and like deep cleansing breaths can help people. But what I have also learned is that when you're breathing, when it comes to calming yourself down, the main event is the exhale. And so a very simple exercise would be to, and we can do this now if you want, is simply to inhale through the nose, like to the count of let's say three and like through the nose, a gentle inhale, hold it, really just relax it there for a second, and then blow it out through the mouth to a count of six. So what we're doing, but you have to do this a few times for it to actually have an effect, I think, because what we're actually doing is lengthening the exhale. And when you lengthen the exhale, you're basically... This is how I understand it. Like you're just exhaling or releasing all these uneasy feelings that you have. And not that we shouldn't embrace our feelings because they inform us, but this kind of helps you sort of just let go of things and just release. So the exhale when it comes to calming down the nervous system is super important. And even if it's like blowing things out, like if you blow, you know, a few times, see how that lands on you. Because I was remembering back to Lamaze, I know I'm dating myself. And I remember that blowing was really very helpful when anxiety was hitting about like, what's going to happen and what comes next, that kind of thing. So little did we know how yeah. anxious we should be. <laughs> I love childbirth. Um, yes. That's past history. Yeah, so, right, totally. but, but the blowing really helps. So exhaling, blowing it out for some people, maybe that 
three, six count is too long. So try inhaling to the count of two, exhaling to the count of four. Or for people where that three, six isn't enough, you could do four, eight. Really, whatever works for you. But focus on the exhale is what you're saying. Yes. Be, like lengthen the exhale. That's what I mean by focus on it. That should be double the count of the inhale. And you don't have to get hung up on counting. You'll know when you start feeling that release and that that actually feels good and calm. That's amazing. That's amazing. So just to, for me, to, I'm going to repeat that grounding with your feet on the floor, sitting solidly on the chair and feeling the chair behind you and under you, mm -hmm. either putting your hand on your heart and feeling your heartbeat and staying with your heartbeat and just watching it sort of regulate or turning that into like a holding, a self-containing mm -hmm. and self-holding. Fantastic. And then the last one is breathing with the uh, with all the emphasis on the exhale because that's where you're getting rid of the tension. Do I have that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna remember this. I'm gonna even try the middle of the night because I'm yeah. having trouble sleeping. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm having trouble sleeping. So, Bhasheva, um, just even really just focusing on your breath when you go when you're when you wake up in the middle of the night just noticing your breathing. You don't even have, like if the exhaling stuff helps you, great, but even just noticing your breathing is going to put you back to sleep. Right, because it, it calms down the crazy part of the brain. Exactly. The amygdala. It gets you back on right. right. Yeah, great. Well, Helen, thank you so, so much. I know you, you. this is not your thing, you didn't <laughs> do this, but you did amazing, everybody. Didn't she do great? Yay, thank everybody you, should send hearts, she's amazing. I don't know if you can thank send hearts you. on Instagram, I don't even know. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much for doing thank this, you. guys. Um, I will be back, I think, on Tuesday morning. Keep an eye out on both Instagram or Facebook. I think I'm back on Tuesday with Paul Nelson, um, who's so amazing as well. And um, Helen, I really, really thank you for doing thank that. Thank you. Thank well, you, Helen, you're getting all these hearts. Helen, oh, you're, getting all, you're getting tons of hearts. Oh, <laughs> that's so you. nice, That everybody. really feels great. I really hope this helps you guys. All right. Stay well, you stay too. sane, and together, like, let's flatten this emotional curve. Amen. Bye. Bye-bye.